when this guy who's like shifted his punching bag from his political opponent, Hillary Clinton, to the press. I'm, I want to be in the room there and I want to see how does that go down. I'm Arielle Wengroff, and we're here for Broadly Talks Films. We're going to be speaking today with Liz Garbus about her new four-part series for Showtime called The Fourth Estate, which focuses on how the New York Times covered Donald Trump's first year in office. The news doesn't tell the truth. They have no sources, and I want you all to know that we are fighting the fake news. They are the enemy of the people. We just got kicked out of the White House briefing. You really got to want the story. I think you either have that or you don't. Would it be fair to characterize that story as wrong? Yes. We went back to our sources. We're confident in the story. If you pick on one of us, it means you have to deal with all yes. of us. Yes. Yes. The, the, the president, 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 president of the United States, States, States who is okay. under federal right. I mean, I hate you guys. That is a story. So let's dial back. It's election night. Where are you? Um, I'm in my living room with my children and my husband um, watching the news. I think like most Americans, we believe the statistical models that said Hillary Clinton had somewhere between a 70 and 99 percent chance of winning. And yeah, it was very surprising. And I think it shows that those in the media didn't really understand how people in the country were feeling. I think like a lot of people in Filmmaking community, we're talking, you know, how do we, you know, is there something we want to say about this? Do we want to be part of telling this story of what happened here or what is happening here? But then I was sitting at my desk procrastinating on Twitter, which I'd spent a lot of time doing in 2016. During like the Donald election. Trump. <laughs> yeah, exactly, like Donald Trump. And um, I saw this Twitter back and forth between Mr. Trump president-elect mm -hmm. and the New York Times. Trump was in New York, he was making the rounds to the big various newspapers. And then at some point in the morning, he tweeted, my meeting with the Times is off. Uh, they changed the rules and I'm not gonna go. And, you know, a little bit later on Twitter, <laughs> you know, response from the New York Times emerged saying, you know, the rules are the same. The president-elect's team had asked for the meeting to be off the record. We're not gonna keep it off the record and he's still invited. And then a little later, Trump then was like, okay, I'm going. Mm -hmm. So they had this meeting and I was sort of watching the day unfold mm -hmm. on Twitter, obsessively not getting anything else done. Yeah. Um, and uh, I thought, that's where I wanna be. I wanna be in that room. Mm. I wanted to make a film about this president and the press. So I have a friend who works for the Times Magazine mm -hmm. and I kind of started texting him that day. And he was like, who knows? And he introduced me to the right editor at the time, a man named Sam Dolnick, and he got it. And he thought, you know, maybe at a time when journalism is under attack, it's a good idea to show what we do. And were the journalists open to you being part of the process? Right, so that's a quite right. So I have the kind of blessing from on high and right. from it, some editors, but then it's like the foot soldiers on, on the, the ground. ground like, How are they going to? It's usually a pretty closed off It's experience. a closed off world. Yeah. There were people who thought this was insane. Their biggest concern is sourcing. That's their... That's everything. That's everything. Yeah. And as time went on, trust, trust was built. Mm -hmm. And if, you know, if a reporter would use a pronoun exposing the gender of a particular source, we would just go back and delete it, like, on site. It's funny because in some ways the shooting conditions are very easy, right? Like you're mm -hmm. shooting in an office. But psychologically, it was very, very, very difficult. We spent a lot of time shooting when things weren't happening, which was especially annoying to people. Um, and then when things would get really busy and there was breaking news, then it was really easy because people were just working and it right. was really easy to shoot. They didn't notice you anymore. Um, it was the days that were slower that were harder. It was unlike any other documentary I've ever made, for sure. Are you concerned at all about um, pushback from Republicans or more conservatives, or do you really feel like this is sort of a straight down the line piece? You know, what I've learned from being at the Times is that, you know, when Maggie Haberman publishes an article, for instance, mm -hmm. people on the left criticize her, people on the right criticize her. I you can't really think about that. You know, you just kind of have to do your best and follow your own North Star, and I'm sure we'll get attacked on the left and the right. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, that's okay. That means we're, like, sparking a conversation. When you see how people are going to walk away from this, what do you want them to feel? I think it's very easy to deride the media and to think, like, these people are the media elite. Mm -hmm. Or also to say that places like the New York Times are part of the resistance or something like this. None of that is true. And I think when you're, you're living in there, like we were, 
um, you kind of you kind of see that these are folks who are working incredibly hard. They're making huge sacrifices, like mm -hmm. working 15, 16 hour days, not seeing their families. These guys are like looking for stories, for truth, and to be first. Journalists are essential to democracy, right? So if you undermine truth telling, mm -hmm. if you have power, you can get away with anything. If you say that the reporters are liars or that the news is fake, then you can do whatever you want. You can abuse the system. So yes, they are a check on power in the same way that Congress is meant to be a check on power. Do you think Trump will watch it? <laughs> I hope he does. It would be great if he watched it, if he saw how hard these folks are working and how they are trying to be as fair and as careful as possible. But I think this, the derision of the press is more of a strategy than a deeply held belief. You're a storyteller. You also happen to be a female storyteller. One thing in watching this piece is you notice there are a lot of sort of white men who are making the decisions about the stories that are being told. Yeah. Well, I think certainly in, in Washington, the Washington Bureau was really quite strikingly yeah. quite white. Um, and in the investigative team of journalists, that was a you know was largely a male group, but of course you know Dean Beckay is running that newspaper. He's an African American man who didn't uh, finish high school. And in New York, I think probably I mean I'm, I don't have the facts at my fingertips is a more diverse space than Washington. But certainly diversifying the newsroom will be very important, and I think the Times is very aware of that. What advice would you give to an emerging female filmmaker that is trying to get her footing? No spelled backwards is on, so keep pushing. Nevertheless, she persisted. Keep persisting. Well, thank you so much for being thank here you. today. Thank you. Thanks. Great questions.